If you clicked on this video, you're probably visiting Universal and you're probably looking for hotel recommendations. That or you just thought we were pretty, but regardless, you've come to the right place. So what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna talk about the differences among Universal Orlando's on-site hotels, the benefits that come with staying at each one, and then give you some tips and tricks to help you make the most out of your stay. Universal currently has eight on-site hotels that are broken down into four different tiers. As you go up the tiers, of course, the price increases, but so do the benefits that come with your stay. We always recommend that people stay on-site at Universal because of all of those benefits, and we personally stay on-site ourselves. We realize that there are sometimes reasons that it makes sense to stay somewhere else, but if you're paying a comparable amount of money for an off-site hotel, you're missing out. The first tier of hotels are the value hotels, which include both endless summer resorts, endless summer surfside, and endless summer dockside. It's easy to get those confused and think that they're one and the same because their names are so similar, but these are two separate hotels that are located across the street from one another. These are the most affordable accommodations on property with standard rooms starting at $91 per night and two bedroom suites starting at $136 per night. Now we specify starting Yet because depending on the time of year that you're visiting and how many rooms are still available, those prices do go up. And even though these are the cheapest hotels at Universal, they still come with some impressive benefits like merchandise delivery to your hotel, room key charging privileges throughout the resort, transportation to and from the parks, as well as early park admission to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And there's really not much more you could ask for from a hotel. The beds are comfortable, the amenities are great, and it's a nice clean place to recharge after a day in the parks. The only real downside that keeps us from staying at these resorts more often than we already do is the transportation. Uh, like Anna said, Universal provides transportation to and from all of their on-site hotels. However, the only one that they provide for the endless summer resorts is that shuttle bus. And typically this isn't a problem. We've done it hundreds of times and never had an issue except when it's really busy. Like the last time that we were there, it was extremely busy and they drop you off at like the main entrance for City Walk, and it took us over an hour to get through security, so Eesh. it's just a headache at times. However, if you're looking to go to Universal and not break the bank and still get those incredible amenities, these are the hotels for you. After value, we have the prime value hotels, which include Cabana Bay and Adventura. Both of these hotels come with all of the same benefits that the value hotels do, like early park admission and merchandise delivery. Yeah, so the benefits of staying at the hotels, they're cumulative. So there's like a base rate of perks that you get for staying on site. The only difference is as you go up the tiers, you get more perks. It's kind of like life, really. <laughs> the only additional benefit that you get for staying at Aventura and Cabana Bay has to do with transportation. Of course, you can still take that shuttle bus over to City Walk, but both of these hotels also offer a walking path. We love having the option to take that walking path, specifically when the parks are supposed to be busy. That way we don't have to deal with the City Walk main entrance. Another great thing about Cabana Bay in particular, but both of these hotels, is their proximity to Volcano Bay. Both of these hotels have walking paths where you can get to the water park, and it's maybe a five to 10 minute walk. Plus, if you're staying at Cabana Bay, you can also get a room with a volcano view, which is always cool. Both of these hotels have rooms starting at $132 per night, and Cabana Bay even has family suites that start as low as $172 per night. Cabana Bay is kind of regarded as the best family hotel at Universal. Not that their other resorts aren't family friendly, but Cabana Bay in particular has a fantastic pool. It has a bowling alley. It has a food court that's perfect for picky eaters. And the overall retro 50s vibe is just so much fun. When you walk in, it feels like it was designed yeah. with families in mind. And Adventura is kind of the exact opposite of that. Now, we love Adventura and we stay here pretty frequently, but it's the only hotel at Universal that doesn't feel like you're staying at a theme park. Yeah. It's a little bit more modern. It's a little bit more high tech. They have iPads in every room that you use to control the TV and the lights. Yeah, and when you get into the shower, these robotic arms come out of the ceiling and they like wash you and stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> no, they don't. It just feels like your standard nice hotel in some big city. A 
Up next, we have the preferred tier, which only consists of Sapphire Falls. Sapphire Falls is in a category all by itself and for good reason. It is just as nice as the premier hotels. The beds are equally as comfortable, including those pillows that I always consider bringing home with me. <laughs> the restaurants are great, and it has all of the same amenities that you'll find anywhere at the Universal Orlando Resort. It just doesn't come with the premier benefits. The only reason that Sapphire Falls isn't considered a premier hotel is because Universal decided to put it in a tier of its own. You do get one extra benefit of staying here versus the prime value hotels, and that's that you have the option to take the water taxi to City Walk. Let's not downplay the water taxi. It is an awesome perk that comes with staying at Sapphire Falls, and at the end of a long night in the parks, it's honestly my favorite attraction. <laughs> <laughs> like Tyler said, this is a transportation method and it allows you to bypass that main city walk entrance and you don't have to walk. We're not gonna lie, we have paid a little bit of extra money to stay at Sapphire Falls over Cabana Bay or Adventura just because we wanted the convenience of taking the boat. And if you're curious about prices, Lowe's Sapphire Falls has standard rooms starting at $184 per night with luxury suites starting at $268. We've always considered this hotel like the budget luxury option because it is going to be cheaper than the next three hotels we're gonna talk about. But at the same time, it's still a step above the value and the prime value hotels. Yeah, it seems like Sapphire Falls was specifically made for people who want like a luxury hotel but don't necessarily care about the express pass, which leads us into our final category of hotels. And finally, the highest tier at Universal are the premier hotels, which include the Hard Rock, Portofino Bay, and Royal Pacific. If you're looking to spoil yourself on your vacation, look no further. These three resorts have all of the amenities you could want and more. But the one benefit that we think makes them worth their premier price is the unlimited express oh. pass. Yes, you heard that right. When you stay at one of these three hotels, everyone in your room gets a free unlimited Express pass. Easy on that free stuff. Like you said, you do pay a premier price for staying at these hotels. <laughs> However, like if you're gonna get Express Pass anyways, it's typically a better idea to go ahead and splurge instead of staying at like a cheaper hotel and purchasing the Express Passes separately. This is especially true if you have several people staying in your room. Sure, you might pay $400 per night for one of the premier hotels, but that's still cheaper than paying $150 per night for one of the lower tier hotels. And then on top of that, paying three to $400 for express pass for two people. Plus, when you stay at one of these premier hotels, you get express pass for the day that you check in and the day that you check out. So that's two full days of unlimited express for the price of one night's hotel stay. These hotels start at $300 per night and go up from there. And we do see them get pretty pricey from time to time, oh, yeah. but we also see the express passes get pretty pricey as well. Of these three hotels, our personal favorite is the Hard Rock. And yes, we're partial to it because that's where we got married, mm. but we also love how close it is to the parks. You can literally be in City Walk just outside of Universal Studios in less than five minutes. If you're looking more for that tropical vacation vibe, Royal Pacific is the place for you. The entire resort feels like you've been dropped off in Hawaii, which we absolutely <laughs> love. Of course. Our second favorite premier hotel has to be Portofino Bay. No disrespect to Royal Pacific, but we love how spacious the rooms are and the overall feel of the Italian city. We also love the cute little shops and the adorable cafes all over the resort. And if you're lucky enough, you might even get a room overlooking the bay. Before we jump into our money saving tips and tricks, if you're enjoying this video, if you would give it a thumbs up. It not only helps out this video, but it helps out our channel overall. Also, if you're looking for more universal tips and tricks to help you plan your vacation, we have videos covering everything from tickets to express passes, dining tips, and more. If you can think about it, we've covered it. So we'll link all of those videos in the description below so you can check those out as well. 
After hearing about all of the different hotel options, you're probably the most excited about the Premier Hotels, specifically because they do come with those unlimited express passes, but we would also venture to say that you are not so excited about their price point. But don't worry, we have some tips to help you save some money while still getting the vacation that you're dreaming of. And the first one is to be aware of discounts. There are actually a few different discounts that you can get for your on-site hotel, like the Florida resident rate or military discounts. But the one that we feel like is often overlooked is the annual pass holder discount. We have several videos where we talk about the benefits of annual passes and why we think more people should consider them. But basically what it boils down to is that if you're gonna purchase at least a three day park ticket, the lowest tier annual pass is gonna cost you roughly the same amount of money. And when you have an annual pass, you have the potential to get up to a 30% discount off your hotel stay. Now those rates are subject to availability and you have to do a little bit of work on your part to check and see when those rates become available, but 30% is a lot of money. Another way that we personally save some money without sacrificing too much is by hotel hopping. Now, hotel hopping isn't for the faint of heart, and I'll be completely honest with you, almost every time that we do it, there's a point that we're like, we are never doing this again, and yet we do it almost every time we visit, so that tells you how we actually feel about it. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hassle to like have to move hotels in the middle of your trip, but if it's the difference between having a couple of nights of Express Pass versus not having any Express Pass, we know what we're choosing. Just to give you an idea of what this looks I'll like. I'll explain it to them. Hey, Anna, I hate hotel hopping. We're never doing this again. It's way too inconvenient. Let's go get a crepe and a butterbeer. Hey, now that we're booking, do you want to go ahead and book like two or three hey. hotels just so we can hey. save a little bit of hey. money? I was talking about giving them an example of hotel hopping. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Let's say you're flying in late on a Friday night after work. You don't get to Orlando until after 10 o'clock at night and all you need is some place to sleep. There's no point in paying 400 plus dollars per night when all you're gonna do is crash in the bed. Instead, what we suggest doing is finding the cheapest hotel you can and staying there that first night. Then the next morning, you can check out of the cheap hotel and make your way over to your premier resort where you can pick up your express passes before heading to the parks. You can also do this on the back end of your trip and this can easily save you three, four, even $500 or more. Another way that we sometimes hotel hop is to stay at a premier hotel for one night right in the middle of our vacation. We sometimes hear people talking about purchasing express passes for one day of their trip, which is a great way to save yourself some money. But if you remember, when you stay at one of the premier hotels, you actually get two full days of express passes. So for example, you could stay one night at a value hotel and then check out and move to say the Hard Rock Hotel for one night. And then after that night, you can move back to the Endless Summer Resort. This way you would get two full days of express passes and you only have to pay for one night of that premier hotel. These are just a few of the ways that we personally try to save some money when we're booking our trips to Universal. But with that, we are going to end today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section telling us all about how technically you can stay at Aventura or Cabana Bay and just walk over to Sapphire Falls and take the water taxi just to let us know that you didn't stick around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, we'll give us thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching, there'll be 10 of them.